Hey guys, Don Bruno here. Welcome to Propertypreneurs. Alright guys, so I'm hoping by now you realize that we invest with our minds, not our wallets. So we're, today we're going to talk about motivated sellers, how we're going to get our first property under contract. Alright, so when you're dealing with these people, understand that these are their biggest assets, their entire lives, everything that they own, everything that they've worked for is quickly falling apart, all right? They're in very sensitive positions, situations. Um, a lot of emotions are involved and it takes very, it takes sympathy, empathy. They're not gonna deal with you unless three things. They know you, they like you, and they trust you. All right, they think you're just some sleazy investor that's trying to come in and profit off their misery. You're going to have a very, very hard time in this program. Um, you got to be very intuitive, right? This is a people business. You have to understand them. You have to understand what they're going through, what they're feeling, and that they don't know you. You're just some random voice on the phone. Um, so it's very, very important. These are three things, you know, the three tens. You want to line up these things. You want to line up. You know, like, and trust. Okay? They can know you, but if they don't like you, they're not going to deal with you. So how do you get this? How do you get in this position to where you can start controlling the conversation Start, you know, especially when you don't know what you're talking about. A lot of you have never done this. You know, have, a lot of you before this program have never even knew you could buy real estate. No money down. So how are you going to come off like an expert? All right. The best way to control these conversations. Ask questions. Stick to the pain questions. How long has the house been on the market? How long has it been vacant? Have you been a landlord long? Um, you know, what is the reason you're selling? You want to be a detective, right? You want to find out the who, what, when, where, and why. Why are they selling? Um, so remember, when you get these leads, all of these leads, they're not cold leads. They responded to you. Right? It's a big, big difference than just calling some random, you know, number. A lot of these people, you know, if they get forwarded to you, um, you know, then you're even in a better position because they called you. So I want you to understand. Think like the seller, all right? Go into their head. They had put up an ad on Craigslist. All the leads you get are going to be Craigslist leads. There are a few other ones, but for the majority, for the main, main purpose of this, there are Craigslist leads. So when you call them, you're responding to a Craigslist ad, an ad they put up. We're not soliciting. We're not, um, we're not cold approaching. They asked for you. They, they asked for your help. So they put their ad up and you're responding. Now, the text that you usually blast out will be somewhere along the lines of, Hi, would you be, you know, would you be willing to sell your house for rent to own, for rent to buy? Now, um, take this because at first, when they first, first pick up that phone, they first hear that ring, they're going to get excited. All right. What they want to happen is happening. They put out an ad and you're responding to it. So they're happy. And then soon as you start throwing words like investor, you know, start now they're becoming they're becoming the buyer now. They're going from seller to buyer. Um, you know, in the beginning, they had the power, so that they were the sellers, and now you're coming in and kind of switching it up on them. So we don't want to tell them, you know, we don't want to come off like the investor. We don't want to come off, um, not to say we're, we're lying, so we're not. They ask you, tell them, you are an investor. We invest in properties. Most of our properties are um, leased with the option properties. Okay, you're coming off as an internet marketer. You've accumulated a large list of buyers, you know, and right now you don't have any properties. 
Um, once you go through the script, once you learn the script, you'll you know you'll understand it more. Um, but what I'm saying is, when I say you don't want to come off like an investor, I'm saying you don't want to come off like a company. All right, people don't like talking to companies. They want to talk to a person. They want to know that you empathize with them, that you feel where they're coming from, that you care. All right, so make sure. I always keep it around five minutes into the conversation before I start um, really engaging with the entire, you know, we're here to help you uh, scenario. So you want to come off for those first few minutes, you want to come off like as if you were a regular um, buyer looking to buy their house to keep. You know, you want to live in it with your family, but you don't want to say this. We're not lying to that. You follow? Um, just answer questions and, you know, be, um, just, you want to just, you know, implement, implicate. Imp am I saying that right? You want to uh, imply, implication. Oh my God, I can't believe, I can't say these words. You want to imply that you're a buyer. So, be vague and just ask your questions, get them to talk. The way people like, the way people begin to like you is if you let them talk about themselves, let them talk about their problems. So as you go through, you know, hi, how you doing? I, uh, yeah, I'd seen your ad on Craigslist. I was just wondering, uh, yeah, would you be interested in selling your home for, to rent to buy? And uh, some questions that a lot of them are going to be very open to the idea. All right. A lot of them have never thought about it before. A lot of them um, are in a situation where you have to understand they've been on Craigslist. They're trying to sell their home without a realtor. They're trying to do it on their own. These buyers and these sellers have no idea what they're doing. They think they do, just like they think they know the value of their home. Okay, they're always going to overvalue their home. They're always going to... Um, you know, they're, obviously everybody's going to just try to make it better for their own situation. So it's, that's common sense. But a lot of them just really don't know. Um, and they don't realize that their house is going to be sitting on Craigslist for a while, months and months and months. And that's going to be a second mortgage. That's an empty house, vacant, doing nothing. All right. What we're doing, this is a win-win for everybody. And really it's just getting that message out there. Just letting them understand what we're doing. We are not, we're getting their house, we're, we're uh, selling their house at full market value. They're getting, the, you know, the whole purchase price. They're not paying us. They're not paying realtor fees. All right. And they're getting a Band-Aid. It's not a, it's not a cure-all, but it's a temporary fix. A Band-Aid on it. It's going to put money in their pocket. It's going to give these tenants um, a house that they can eventually buy. And, uh... You know, they're going to put some money in your pocket. So how do you get paid? You get paid from the buyers. So that's how it is beneficial to them. They're not going to let you put their house under contract unless you know what you're talking about. Unless you sound competent. All right? Unless you can say words like implicate. <laughs> um, so, yeah, how are we going to do that? Let them talk about themselves. Keep asking them questions. When you come across something you don't know, inquire. Is the house ready to live in? Okay, how long has it been vacant? Why are you selling? What is the reason? Are you willing to let this house sit down for a couple months to get that, that price? Are you willing to wait this out? Okay, is, it, is, it, is there a tenant in the house? How long have they been? How long have you been a landlord? These are all pain questions. They're gonna bring back the reality of this situation. Okay, if they say that they're not, so you're going to get people that say, I'm not desperate. They're going to say, I'm not desperate. Um, that might be an implication that they are desperate. So you really want to pay attention. You want to write down everything. Just keep everything written down. Use this, you know, later on. Um, so, like I said, we got the know, we got the like, and we got the trust. All of these on that scale of 10, if you've ever listened to Jordan Belfort, the three tens, you want to get them to that point. You know, and it goes into the, you know, the straight line of persuasion. Um, 
this is sales. You know, it's not going to feel like sales. It's going to feel like it's easier sometimes. This is an easy sell. You know, they're trying to get rid of the house. If you can just let them understand what you're trying to do, who you are, and, you know, that you empathize and that this is a win-win for everybody, they're going to let you put that house under contract. Now, what are the main things to focus on? Stick to the script. Don't go off the script. We provided a script. The script works. So just stay, you know, stay on base. And uh, the question is, is the real big thing. You want to get the full market value. Now, if you're going off and you're going to try doing this wholesale or if you're going to try you know, doing the short sales, look for foreclosures, look for the abandoned houses. Um, to know if you got a good deal, that's getting onto a whole nother, you know, that's a whole different lesson. That's a whole different video right there. For lease to op for, for lease with the option, you want to stick to the script. You want to stick to the questions, um, and you don't want to take no for an answer, and you don't want to take yes for an answer. All right. A lot of these people, they don't want to be rude, so they'll come up with an excuse. I'm, I'm driving. I'll call you back. Can I give you a call back when I get, you know, when I get off the road? Um, so, so they will say yes, and don't let them off the phone. Make sure they understand it. All right. Now, they have to. A lot of, a lot of you are going to realize that the conversation is going to be going good. Uh, the sale, they're going to be interested. They're going to like it until you get. So you get to this part right here, the contract. That is the only way that this is that this becomes legal. That we're able to do what a realtor could do without a license. That we're able to sell somebody else's house. We don't have principal interest in that house. We don't have that contract. We don't have a deal. All right. Um, now you know you'll find. I notice when you know when I'm making calls. Sometimes you get to that contract. People are saying you want to lease my house, and they get very shaken up about it. Again, going back to the no like and trust. They don't know you. They don't like you. They don't trust you. You have to understand this contract. You have nothing without that contract. All right. You get in big trouble. It's illegal. So you want to make sure that you, you know, put yourself, don't put yourself in a position. Some people will say, find me buyers and then I'll sign that contract. Don't even market it. Let it go. You can't do it. It's not legal. Stick to the format. So that is your number one goal right now for anything. It's not selling the house. It's not finding buyers. It's not getting a buyer's list. This is the only thing that matters in the beginning. Once you get that contract, once you get that house in the contract, you're going to have four contracts all together. And you're going to have to get signed between the sellers and the buyers. Um, but don't worry about, don't worry about marketing. Don't worry about trying to sell the house. Don't worry about um, the length of time it's going to take. Just worry about getting the contract. Um, you're going to want them to fax it. You're going to want to read the lease memo to them. Read it over the phone. Make sure they understand everything. Um, and also when you're negotiating, um, it doesn't matter what the purchase price is, uh, what the end, what the full market value, they can even go over what the house is worth as long as the rent is reasonable. Make sure that that rent is at market standard, that you're going to be able to get tenants to pay that. Um, you're going to negotiate what you know what the rent will be every month and how much of that will go towards the end price so there's negotiating room um that's something you can wiggle with some sellers are going to ask you do they get the down payment you have to let them know that is how we get paid so you know we're not taking anything from them we're not taking their end price we're not taking their rent we're not taking the down payment from them. We're not paying a down payment. We don't pay to hold these houses. This is a complete 100% no money down deal. 
So you're coming in as a marketer, helping them out. You're you know, getting the tenant, but you're not representing anyone but yourself. You represent yourself. Um, and that down payment, that's our lease fee. So, you know, usually it would go about 10% of the, uh, of the, of the uh, value of the house. So 10%, um, I wouldn't go any lower than three grand. Usually it's going to be anywhere from three to seven grand. You'll get those 10 grand houses, you know, but five grand is going to be the standard. Um, you know, it's, I've heard of people splitting it with the, with the buyer, with the seller. That is completely up to you. Um, I would say go on situations, you know, in your first ones, you probably might be tempted to do that. After a while, you're going to see that, you know, you start getting some houses in the pipeline. You're going to start seeing how possible this is, how possible it is to be flipping three or four properties a month, you know, and then you're going to be making a decent income. So you're not going to want to get into that. But sticking with this, lease option is yours. You want to get these sellers to really understand what you're doing. The contract, no obligation. You want to let them know um, they find a seller before you. Congratulations, you know, what part is friends, thank you, and everything. If they get, you know, if they get their house rented, you know, you can't stop them. So, like I said, it just gives us principal interest. You want to say that there's no obligation that they come into this. It's not a binding contract. All this is doing is giving you the right to purchase that house later on in the future. Um, and that's what we're selling. Then we are selling that right to the tenant to take our shoes and purchase that house. That's all it really goes down to. So, this is dealing with motivated sellers, speaking on the phone. I will see you guys in the next video.